guys, Mr. Klein here with our second and last lesson of our chapter on energy. In our first lesson, we talked about the two main types of energy, which are kinetic and potential energy, and then the different types of potential energy. In this lesson, we're going to talk about the many different forms that energy takes. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's get started. Now, when we look at this video, we obviously see these crash test dummies crashing into a car. Uh, what type of energy is going? Well, you're like, oh, Mr. Klein, obviously it's kinetic energy because it's moving. Oh, but... Grasshopper, my question for you is this, where does the car get the energy to move from? Now, if you're clever, you're going to say, well, the engine, of course. Well, where does the engine get its energy? Well, it comes from the gasoline in the car. Well, what type of energy or what form of energy is gasoline? Because it's not the same thing as moving uh, right here. So obviously, energy must have changed from one form or another in order to have this crash test. Now, normally, we have five big ideas in this lesson. This lesson, you get two extra. You get more big ideas for the normal price. We're going to go through seven different forms of energy. So let's go ahead and let's get going. Energy can exist in many different forms and can act beside each other as well as changing from one form to another. Remember, the law of conservation of energy says that energy is neither created nor destroyed. So however much energy you have into a system, inside of a system, it stays the same. It just turns from like kinetic to potential and back and forth, and the total always stays the same. The same thing goes with all these different forms we'll talk about. The total amount of energy stays the same, but it will just change from one form to another. The first type of energy we will discuss is what we call mechanical energy, or the energy of moving objects. A bouncing ball, uh, your arms that are flapping around right now because you're obviously waving your hands in the air like you just don't care. Oh, I, I'm, I'm the only one doing that? Oh. Anyway, uh, all moving objects uh, demonstrate mechanical energy. Now, you might want to ask yourself, well, Mr. Klein, how much mechanical energy does an object have when you wave your hands in the air like you just don't care? Well, what you do is you add up the total amount of kinetic and potential energy, and that gives you the total amount of mechanical energy. And a good example that we have is that of an arrow in flight. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's look at our example. We can ask our good friends at Dude Perfect uh, from about... 301 yards, how about 280, 290 meters? He shoots the arrow. The arrow flies through the air. It has mechanical energy. Boop. Good job. All right. So obviously hitting it from that far. So let's review this. First off, whenever they pull back on the bow, you have elastic potential energy. And that's transferred to the arrow as it flies through the air. And it continues to fly through the air. It has the mechanical energy as it's moving. All right. So let's go ahead and let's create our graphic organizer. Make sure you have each of these blanks for each of the forms of energy we're going to talk about. Mechanical energy is the energy of moving objects. It is kinetic energy because it's moving, okay? And a good example would be an arrow in flight. So I'm going to give you a second and let you fill this out. All right, so obviously you have this filled out because you paused your video and you got this. Let's talk about our second type of energy. The energy stored in the chemical bonds of atoms is called chemical energy. This is the second type. Chemical energy is considered a form of potential energy because it's stored, it's waiting to be used. And when there's a chemical reaction and the chemical bonds break, the energy is released and work can then be done, okay? Because then the chemical energy changes into something else. The food that we eat is full of chemical energy. When we digest our food, our bodies break the chemical bonds in the food and provide us the energy to do things. So anytime you see a chemical reaction like this, matches catching flames, the chemical bonds are being broken and the energy is being released in order to do work, okay? So as you can see, chemical reaction, chemical bonds, chemical energy. So let's go ahead and let's fill this out. Let's add this in. Chemical energy is the energy in chemical bonds. It's potential energy because it's stored. It's not moving. And the food that we eat is a good example of that. The next type is electrical energy. The energy that comes from electrons that move is what we call electrical energy. Now, electrical energy involves moving electrons. Obviously, since it involves moving electrons, it's considered kinetic energy. Now, there are two main types of electrical energy that we're going to talk about. The first one is static electricity. This is when the electrons move within a single object. What happens is that the uh, electrons move from one end to the other. That's why, and we'll talk about this later this year when we talk about electricity. We'll talk about these two types, but I'm just introducing it right here. Uh, within an object, the electrons move from one end to the other. That's static electricity because the object is like not, it's staying there. The electrons are not moving per se, like it's not moving out of an object. The other one is current electricity. 
Electrical energy that involves the continuous movement of electrical charge is uh, current electricity. So what happens is, even though it moves from object to object, the electrons just keep on moving and it creates a current, like a current of water. The electricity comes from power plants is a great example of current electricity. Or anytime you plug something into a wall socket, that's current electricity. So a good example, of course, would be lightning. And by the way, those lightning bolts all struck these three high rises in Chicago at the same time. And this is static electricity. All right. So let's go ahead and let's add this in. Electrical energy is the energy of moving electrons. Obviously, it is a kinetic energy. And a good example of it is lightning. So. Next one is kind of sort of related to chemical energy, and it's nuclear energy. It's the energy that's stored in the nucleus of an atom. Because it's a stored form of energy, of course, it's potential. And the reason why we use nuclear energy is because in the nuclei, or the more than one nucleus of an atom, they're held together by extremely strong forces. So if you can break those bonds, just like chemical energy, you break the bonds, you release energy. If you have a super strong force keeping them together, if they break, you're going to release a huge amount of energy. And that's why we have nuclear explosions and nuclear reactions and stuff. Our sun is powered by nuclear fusion reactions. What essentially happens in a nuclear fusion reaction is that two atoms, the nuclei, are smooshed together. And when they smoosh together, the protons and neutrons come together and they bond to create a new uh, atom, a new element, actually, because it has more, more protons. And a huge amount of energy is released, like in a nuclear bomb like this. This is a hydrogen bomb, where hydrogen is fused in order to form helium, just like on the surface of the sun. This is a fusion bomb. For, uh, and for the record, the nuclear bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, um, at the end of World War II, those were what we call fission weapons, where we have uh, large elements that break apart and form smaller ones. So fission is when something breaks apart, fusion is when it comes together. And if you're a little bit confused, that's okay. We're going to talk about nuclear energy and nuclear power production later on, and we're going to discuss this in a little more detail. So let's go ahead and let's add this some more. We're more than halfway done. Nuclear energy is the energy in the nucleus of an atom. It's potential energy in the sun is a great example of it. Now, if you remember from previous chapters on matter, you remember that the temperature of an object depends on the movement of its particles. So the faster it moves, the higher the temperature. Okay? And because the particles bounce into each other, heat is created. So obviously because we have moving particles, thermal energy or the total kinetic energy of all particles of an object is a form of kinetic energy. Heat is kinetic energy. Okay? So we call that thermal energy. And so we have this paper airplane above this uh, oven range, this electric range, and the heat from the air is allowing, is rising and allowing the paper airplane to continue to fly. Why does it rise? Because the, uh, the heat on the electric range is bumping into the particles of the air, and the more they bump, the faster they move and the higher the temperature. So let's go ahead and let's add this. Thermal energy is the energy of moving particles. It is kinetic energy, and the temperature of something is an example of thermal energy. We have two more to go, so let's go into this. Another type of energy is electromagnetic energy. Electromagnetic energy is the energy in the form of electromagnetic waves. What are electromagnetic waves? Well, they're waves of energy which have properties of both electricity and magnetism. Okay, Because they're waves, they're kinetic energy because waves involve movement, as you'll learn in a later chapter. Uh, in a later chapter, what we're going to actually talk about are waves in general, and in particular electromagnetic waves in the electromagnetic spectrum. So hang on to this. Just know that electromagnetic waves is electromagnetic energy. For example, light would be a good example of that. Uh, radio, x-rays, gamma rays, all those things. In addition, microwave ovens operate by the use of electromagnetic waves. Because what happens is, as you see in this picture, this bar of soap expands, is microwaves are being released by the by the generator, the heat, the electrical current creates it, and these uh, microwaves hit the object and they cause the object's uh, particles to move faster, which makes the temperature good warmer. And as a result, you, that's why you warm something up. And it warms up really quick. So electromagnetic uh, energy is electromagnetic waves. It's kinetic energy also, and microwaves are a great example of it. Finally, the last one, related kind of, sort of, to electromagnetic energy is sound energy. It involves waves, and that's why they're related, okay? And the way sound energy works is energy is transferred through vibrations in the air or other particles. So the 
for sound waves to operate, the air moves along and they bounce into each other and it transfers the energy. Like, a, like I said, electromagnetic energy, it is a type of kinetic energy. And because sound energy requires particles to move, and these particles are called a medium, sound cannot travel through empty space. So when you watch Star Wars and you see the starfighters going in to attack the Death Star or Star Killer base, for me to be really relevant to Star Wars The Force Awakens, uh, what happens is you hear, hear the starfighters flying around and stuff. Actually, in outer space, because there's no particles for the sound to travel through, no sound can be transmitted. So actually, in space, a spaceship can fly right by you, and if you're in your spacesuit, you can just watch it fly right by, and you have no sound. Now, the reason why movie directors put sound in is because if you would just see it pass by with no sound, it would kind of be disorienting. So that's why they put it. It, it, it feels real to us, but in reality, it really isn't. So a good example of this would be sound that matches the frequency of the glass and actually breaks it. In our class, when we talk about sound waves and stuff, I'm actually going to show a video of this happening. This is actually really difficult to do, but it can be done. When the sound waves, as you can see by the glass, the glass vibrates, and that's because the air particles are bouncing into it and it's pushing, and it goes and breaks. So finally, we'll add this in. Uh, sound waves are waves made by vibrating objects. Kinetic, it is, of course, kinetic energy and speaking like me that's an example of sound energy so there you go those are the different forms of energy there's seven types mechanical energy moving objects chemical energy energy stored in chemical bonds electrical energy is moving electrons nuclear energy is energy stored in the nucleus of an atom thermal energy is heat or particles bouncing into each other uh, increasing their kinetic energy and electromagnetic energy and sound energy are energy created by waves and in our class, we're going to be doing some labs where we look at how energy transfers from one, one form to another. But it's important to know these, know these definitions, know those examples. So there you go. That's your lesson. Hope you enjoyed it. And if, as always, you have any questions, please let me know. And thanks for watching.